Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Bandwagon Podcast. And today is a I'm joined by a guest who, believe it or not, was probably the reason why I got behind uh, and uh, got behind doing podcasts. And uh, I'll uh, I'll get into it a little bit further on. But without further ado, welcome to Hey Stand Me. How's it going, brother? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for joining. I know it's been um I think between illnesses and uh gigging and stuff, I think we finally made it happen. Hundred percent, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on your show, bro. I need you to confirm and just sort a few bits out and uh and hopefully I'll get the answers that I that I need from here. But um I think it was about 2017. I could be wrong, it could be a little bit earlier than that. I went on a stag and uh I was absolutely plastered, and okay. the next day, uh, sorry, cut. We've come back, and I was sharing a room in, in I don't know, I was in a kitchen off, like a, a shitty little room, uh, and I'm lying there, and I was just bored, and like no one else is up, so I was just going through Twitter as you do it back in them days, and I saw an interview with with yourself. It was just a link. I clicked through this link, and it was a, and I couldn't believe it. It was like. About an hour and a half interview, about an hour interview that you that you'd done. I don't know who it was with, uh, but I've never forgot that conversation that 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 came out of it. Okay, it was the first time that I ever listened to a long format of a Punjabi artist in that yep. way, or anyone in in that matter of fact from South Asian uh, background. Yep. But it was so revealing in terms of what what the what you said in there that it always it always spurred me that when you came on. I knew that that was the conversation I need to pick up again. Okay, cool. I, was, I was itching to ask certain questions. I just wanted to know more and more information. So just on that, yeah. do you remember giving a long form? A you know, it's, very, it's very rare that you get people that go in depth. Normally it's just like, yeah, what's going on? <clears throat> what you've been working on? Uh, what's coming next? And your inspiration and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's, there's been a few, um, but normally they're quite short, right? So... I'm just trying Do you to remember that specific one? I don't know where it was from. It's about. I'm trying I think to... it was the first time you talked about your contract situation. I'm okay. I'm hoping you're going to say because if not, I'm really screwed. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't remember, bro. Honestly, uh, it, it's definitely not a radio one, uh, which I know it's supposed to be a. Yeah, it was. It was. It was mad. But I'll, I'll get to it anyway. I want. I'll, I'll cover that side. So, H, how have you been? Um, like you've been, you've just released a new song with Shana Verinda, Holy Holy. Um, what's the initial responses and and uh, that experience? What was it like? Because your your video was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, it was good. Do you know, what? it's been, um, even now, bro. I'm just every day just getting um, messages from. Do you know what you know? Um, and everyone else, the game's changed, bro. Uh, from before when people used to listen to music and. The song was around, bro. It will last for a month, it will last for two months, and it's just keep, you know, you're on the road doing interviews, you're doing this, that. But now that concentration span is, um, it's gone very, like, so everyone's very, like, quick, 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 right? You've just released this, um, literally on the same day. When's your next song coming out, kind of thing, you know? Um, so yeah, man, so far it's going good, but, um, yeah, just keep pushing it, man. And Sean and Vrinda, you know, I mean, these, these guys are amazing, bro, amazing producers, brilliant guys. And it's, it's taken me a while to sort of <clears throat> get in studio with someone and sort of have that gel, you know, um, have that marriage in studio to just be on the same wavelength, you know what I mean, to uh, bring the best out of me. You know I mean, why, was, why, why did it take so long in terms of like working with other people? Um, I think, do you know what, bro? I have been working with um, other people, like even features and stuff. We've done with First Man and um, here and there, done other features. But you know what? I think your heart and soul needs to be in it, bro. Um, and for for a little while, bro, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was a bit, um, I was busy on the road, firstly. Um, I was very busy, like even now, uh, I'm doing at least minimum four or five gigs a week. Um, if not, you know what I mean? Like say minimum I'm doing is say three, four, but then sometimes I'm doing seven, eight gigs a week. That's keeping me busy. But at the same time, you've got your family life. But musically, um, I think you just need to be in the right place, bro. You know? And I've met a lot of people on the way which I thought that, yeah, do you know what, this is a vibe, but then you get to learn and you think, okay, cool. And then what happens is that um, because you go through so much, you start being conscious, you start overthinking sometimes, you know, which was my weakness. And I openly say it, bro, that was my weakness at one point. I used to overthink a lot as well. Um, and now, man, it's just that you just have to leave it, just let it, just let it go, man, just put your 110% in. 
But for me, it had to be a right time as well, bro. And I think I met Sean and Brenda at the right time. Um, it's all about the songs. Um, it's all about the energy. And yeah, bro. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, is it, now I think it's the right time, you know, um, for me. You know what? Um, when you're talking about the, sort of those re- relationships and um, I think... It, <laughs> I think it's kind of a blessing and a curse that you've been bo- you've been born into this industry as well. Yeah. You know, you, you, your dad um, is world famous. Yeah. One half of Hira, uh, Palavinder Tami, and the way that the way from the the trailblazing what he, what was produced and what they did. Yeah, you know, very rarely are you going to get you, you can't overshadow that because it's always a time and place in it, and and it's not. This conversation is not about comparisons or anything like because everyone's on their own journey. Yeah. But you know, as a, a, you've you, you know, you quite famously said you, would, you used to join him on stage at the age of six, yep. meeting all these artists and having all that experience. How hard was it when he was not there? You know, that you know, when he's doing the gigging, what you're doing, you've got a young family. What yeah. are you conscious about in terms of not replicating some of those experiences? Um. Like you said, bro, it's, um, these are big shoes to fill, you know. And these guys, legends, and a hat off, hats before I even start, hats on to all the legends out there that sort of um, paved the way for us youngsters, you know what I mean? And it's it's the kind of thing where um, I've grown up around the industry, I've grown up around being in studios, um, watching Dad Dot sing and perform and rehearse. And it's a, it's a massive blessing, bro. But at the same time, people said to me that, okay, hey, you know what? It's easy for you. It's going to be easy for you because your dad's in the game. Um, but what they need to think about, you know, it's even harder because there's a lot of weight on my shoulders as well, you know, um, because it's a big name to live up to. Um, and I remember my dad being on the road where I didn't see him for a good few months, six months, um, and I missed him, you know, and I still remember running after the um, group's van, you know, I mean, the all 10, 11 piece member van, they used to go jump on the minibus and go to gigs and then straight from the airports and fly out. And I was that kid running behind that, trying to, you know what I mean, just stop my dad going and stuff. But now we're very fortunate well, with technology, we have FaceTime, this and that. So, um, but the thing is that now, like my eldest is 10, my youngest is seven. Um, I think those five, six years are crucial. Um, and if we have the opportunity to do that, bro, so I'll balance it. You know, I'll take them with me on tour where I can, I'll take them with me. Um, and again, bro, it's, it's what you make it. You, know? you have to have that balance. When I'm back, um, I say I arrive, I'll try to get in the first flight. So I arrive in the morning and I'll be bang on the school run. You know, and I think they see that as well. Um, and look, man, we're still very fortunate that we can pick and choose our hours of when, for example, we get to come back. I mean, I could be stuck in an office nine to five or even later than that and not see my kids at the weekend. So, but it's you know, like, everything's a sort of a um, challenge, bro. Um, but you just have to make it work, you know. Yeah, I, 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 because uh, one of my mutual good friends is Gerj Gill, which is Sadara Gill's son, son, and I often have that kind of conversation with him, and he. And sometimes he's always kind of struggled to kind of open up on certain conversations because they've always been very protective. Like their life, their life's always been in in um, displayed in in front of him. And what I mean by that is that I remember when we were going in like West Brom or a local uh, town centre, and you know Sadar SS Gill, the superstar, he's walking and he can't walk more than ten steps without somebody else going there. <laughs> but he always used to have his family around him, and he was you know guarding the, the family. Yeah, yeah. He's always been brought up a little bit similar to that in terms of well, when to open up or when to discuss with, you know, with with people that the trust that as you get more successful in life, that circle of trust gets smaller and smaller. And people, uh-huh. around you. do you echo? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? One hundred percent, bro. It's just um, the thing is that look now more eyes are on you, bro. And I'll be honest. Look, I've been um, doing my thing, and it's it's great to see us supporting each other. But I'm going to be open about it. There's, I think the majority of people, not majority, there might be the same amount or how many of um, there are, they like to bring people down. They always look for the negatives, you know. Um, but there's more to sort of drag you down and sort of pinpoint of, are oh, you done this? You know? They're not going to look at the positives, you know. And that's that I found very sort of like, now even when I started, um, there was a lot of people comparing me to my dad. And look, man, they've whatever they've done, bro, they've got the evergreen songs, you know. I sometimes do do cover versions of their Dory Johnny, you know, this and that. And listen, they that is their song, 
You know, yeah, but I, if, I if you can't do it, no one else can do it. You've got more fucking right than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, but um, the thing is that, do you know what, I don't, like, for example, I've never sort of been sort of riding off their name, and I don't want to do that. My dad's always taught me, he goes, listen, like, you have to put that hard work in, you have to put that um, effort in, and uh, you know what I mean? And yeah, I do have the right, because I've I've been growing up around that, you know, that's that's my father, and I'm proud to say it, and at the end, if I'm not going to do my dad's songs, um, you know, I mean, who else? Who else is I'm going to do, right? Um, I want him to live his dream again. But the thing is that there's a lot of people that can look at that in a positive way, and there's a lot of people that it's a shame to see that trying to sort of spin it in the negative. But again, man, these people don't last, right? So, yeah, you know, I I think I've changed my opinion on 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 on, on, on this kind of next part. I think I think that negativity is a UK thing. Yeah, I really it, do. I think, I think honestly, it's a UK thing, bro. Um, you travel the world, like now, for example, um, it's amazing to see, like, I've been Canada, I've been America, I've been, um, I've been India, but not, like, music related, I've been, but everyone's championing each other, but everyone's like, yes, come on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, you know, and it's a shame, bro, that why it doesn't happen, like, here, but back in the day, from my experience and from what I've seen as a kid, and, um, like, for example, Hira, Aparna Sangeet, for example, when Aparna Sangeet were down from Birmingham to London, um, my dad looked at yeah, come around, they'll have a laugh at the house. You know what I mean? I think it was one of the groups were going to Canada on the first tour. I think dad went to meet Sadar Uncle at the airport to say, yeah, do you know what, if I'm not wrong, um, or is the other way around. And everyone's championing each other, you know? Um, but again, it was it was strong then. And it's just, you can see it's just gone down over the years because everyone just thinks, oh, no, I'm mad, dad, no, I'm mad. Listen, man, there's space for everyone in the industry, right? But yeah, I, I think it was one of those meets where I think your, your, your dad and that were there when they got introduced to Jazzy B. So they, they'll always have, I'll always give him that, that credit. In, on that. <laughs> I'm oppressing it, but you know the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think, you know, it was interesting. I was uh, recently at a uh, dinner with the uh, with PRS and uh, Manny Sandu and, okay. and, and Jazz was there. And they were talking about it specifically about how much of a disease kind of like from a from, in terms of that negativity, the hate stuff is around here and how people are so fixated on yeah. the UK market when they don't realise how big Canada Canada is, how big India is. And even if there is any negativity, because it's obviously it's not it's not completely eradicated. It's so minimal compared to it. And people kind of stay away, stay away from those individuals. Do you um? You know, as you as you were kind of experienced, as you were leading up to your 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 first release at that time, what was the biggest lesson that you you uh, were being taught at that time? Because because you've got you, you've got the the pressure of your dad, for example, yep. as a father and as a um as in the and as a a musician. But then you know he already knows that he's he's already experienced the changes happening in an industry that's becoming more and more toxic and then he's got his son <laughs> going in there exactly uh do you know what it was it was a lot of pressure well but at the same time um i was um obviously working with rishi it was you know i mean dad always said one thing to me he goes listen man just get your foundation which was my graduation um i graduated in computer science and after that, he goes, look i'll push you all the way but just do that get you get get your feet firm on the ground and be ready to if that doesn't work out you're ready you still got that you know um, which I'm I'm glad I took that um, advice and I graduated and stuff. And then after when I uh, met Rishi, we started working together. And that year, bro, um, I left my job and I gave that full year in studio with him. I sat with him. I just learned a lot just being around that environment. And I'm sure even then my dad was saying, listen, just do some work inside. I was working at the airport at the time, part time. But you saying? Put your hands low, in it? Anyone? Anyone? Right <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. Everybody, when you work at the airport, you from... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, and it was, you know, it was one of those things, man. And and I know Dad, Dad knew that I was in good hands, but at the same time, he knew how toxic this industry uh, was and is getting, obviously from his experience. But at the same time, he didn't want to hold me back, so I was saluting for that, bro. Um, mm -hmm. He always gave me my um, that chance to do, but he always drummed it in my head, just keep going, keep going. And even throughout the whole project, we worked together, you know. Um, but it was, um, it was, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where you have to sometimes just learn yourself as well, you know? And my dad, and he said to me before, he goes, look, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to think about you need to pick yourself up and don't, don't slack, just keep going, you know? Um, and I think that's the biggest thing around you, man. You need that sort of circle to give you that push, you know? And we I'm see not... how toxic the industry is, bro. Oh. But... 
I mean, what can we do? I remember seeing um, your first set of ads on Brit Asia when it was like those little snippets. Oh yeah, that, that, you know that you that you were arriving, you were coming, and and then when I saw the the finished product, yeah. is this side the cage? Is, is that the one where you were in the pink jacket? Yeah, pink blazer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought this is fully pro- polished. The video quality was different. Yeah. You knew this was this was going place, and and you could just tell that there was something something different that. But what was the the thinking around that as well? You know it's what, also it's, um, from a different strategy. Yeah, I think do you know what it's not it's not down to only myself, bro, and where it's where um sort of the that props to be given is the whole team, you know. Uh, Rishi, my team at that time, Rishi, Walid, uh, Mumbai Rouge, the whole sort of team that made that happen, bro. I couldn't have done it myself, you know. Um X One X film, um, who done the videos and it was just a collective thing and um we were just enjoying it, bro. And I did not know and I did not think that it would sort of spiral so fast, you know. And it was a strategy that they had straight after Sadhguru Dharma, it was Mitra Dijan, straight after Mitra Dijan, it was Harga Bru. Um, and at the same time, there was no plan. It was just finished. I was doing gigs, bro, before even a single came out. And I had people standing in front, literally swearing at me, bro, saying that, who the hell are you? This and that, but, but then obviously Rishi took me under his wing and he stood with me and he said, listen, this is my new artist. Like, be ready. And we just didn't give up, bro. But it was one of those things where, you know what, we got this and we're going to go for it, you know? And that time, bro, there was no social media platforms apart from, I would say, MySpace, High Five. The Facebook uh, was just coming. Out. It was two two years later, actually. I think. Yeah, it was. and then um, MSN Messenger, which was just for chats. It weren't nothing, you know what I mean? And it was a, that's when dial-up connections finished off. You know, Blackberries, uh, Blackberries, and stuff like that. So it's more about, I think, more about them. But now people, uh, they have to think about. It. You have to think about so many different things, bro, uh, before you release. But I think at that time, bro, getting everything out, it was just, um, I think the team was just amazing, bro. It was just, and it was the right time, bro. Timing is everything. It was that gap in the market, and uh, we just came through, bro, you know? So you, you there. I, I remember seeing you on stage uh, in Birmingham. Um, I forgot, it was at another gig, and it got moved to another venue, and, and you were the, the main the main act on it. Right. And one thing that I I I, I left that day thinking I got this guy knows how, he knows stage presence he knows what to do like there, there's been many artists who have come big ones they've done tours now who've literally stood up had all the setup had the attendance there got all the musicians blah blah, blah but look like a, a fat potato on stage like they have got no charisma whatsoever. Yeah. You had that in abundance. Where do you think that came from? I know the obvious answer is what you say, my dad, I saw him on stage, <laughs> my dad and that. But I think it's slightly different from there. What what where do you think it comes from? Well, I think for me, um, stage is my buzz, man. I love it. As soon as like even now, people my kids ask me, man, like daddy, do you get nervous before going on stage? I say, Yeah, I do. And they say, Why? But you've been doing it for years. And I'm like, those nerves are good. If you if you're not full of nerves, if you ain't got butterflies in your stomach, that means you're overconfident. I hate being overconfident. Yes, you are confident. You can do your thing. But when you're on stage, bro, that's I've been taught, and I'll never forget this. Um, it was um, when I was six, seven years old, when I performed with Hida in Canada. And I went on stage. I was like, I'm here. I'm dancing to Jindua, Debindua, Hida, right? And I'm dancing, and I've seen thousands of people, like, cheering. And I've just obviously got a stage fright. I started crying, and I ran back off. Mm-hmm. And this is very much six, seven years old. I've ran off and dad was still performing. Deepa Kazanchi took his guitar off in the middle of the set, put it down and he come to me. And he just says, why was worth it? He goes, listen, you want to be a superstar? You get on that stage. You own that stage. And all my beloved only bro since that day. And it's just, for me, it's been, it's been, you know I mean, stage is everything for me, bro. You know, you respect that stage, you worship that stage and you just go and you just do your thing. So um, I just enjoy myself, bro. Just name dropping Deepak Kazanchi just like that, you know. What I mean, it's just that like, you just think of the value and the bro, what he's brought to people's memories and the skill to produce those albums for Hero is just unbelievable. Yeah, man, I think and those look man, those days now, a lot of people are working off samplers, a lot of people are working off, obviously it's all computers now, which back then they had computers, but the technology wasn't that advanced then. I still remember him. Like when he got Bangla Fever, the album, I was a kid sitting there and I was asking my dad what he was doing. So they, they used to have spools, like tapes in those days. So Remix used to cut them and join them, cut them and join them. Like now we just comp, right? Okay, cool. Take that vocal again, take that part again, this and that. 
but those days now, man, do the whole vocal again, cut it and join it, sell tape it together. It was just, it was unbelievable genius, bro. But um, yeah, and I was very fortunate to be around that man. Was there any lessons that you took from that that those process that you kind of use now? Bro, I wish I did. I wish I paid a lot more attention um, then. But as a kid, bro, I was always into my football. Um, I was into playing ball, which, you know I mean, I love. And that's one thing I used to do. We done, as kids, we done backing vocals um, for, I think it was, um, Yara this, Yara at the start, I think. It's a he, Yara. He, that says me, my sister, <laughs> my mom's kids and our cousins just there. Um, but other than that, man, I wish I did, bro. But I, did, I think the biggest thing was just um, being around dad and just around the whole energy, bro, is that respect factor. You know what I mean? Respect what you do and the people around you. Um, respect the youngers and respect the elders and just, you know what I mean? Just, um, yeah, just do your thing. I, I, I want to just progress it a little bit a little bit forward. So uh, the world's at your feet. You're you're getting booked up everywhere. I think I even met the first time I met you. I think you had you were possibly recording a behind the scenes DVD. DVD. That's yes. right. Yes. Yes. So I want you to take take me through because I'm going to be reliving that in other interview in my, in my head. I should have yeah. sent you that before. <laughs> Did that again? I should have sent you that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so everything's uh, just for everybody um, who, who's listening or watching for it. You've you've come out with your album. It, yep. It's it's doing bits everywhere. You're you're getting booked out every everything. And then there was in in a period where, f- for me as a punter, you just went missing. I didn't didn't yeah. weren't able to see you. Or the re- releases really dried up at, at that point. Um, what happened at, at that point? And I'm going to try and stay quiet as much as I can. Yeah. No, do you know what, bro? I'll tell you, like, since the album came out and we're working on new projects, um, then after that, I'll be honest, man, I was going to be open. Um, there was a couple of more people that got involved in the business side of it, which I had nothing to do with as an artist. I was just busy on the road. I was enjoying being on the road. And at that time, we were compiling the DVD. So I had footage from uh, when we were in studio, when we went mastering, when we even like vocaling the songs to my first gig to like traveling on the road everywhere you know what i mean from far east to canada to europe everywhere and it was always a tour manager traveling with me so it's just like what people are doing now we were doing that then you know and that's when the flip camera came out that was the advanced yeah flip camera plug in the usb form it's downloading on the computer and from there it's looked like we started combining a dvd page down the story so far um, which is not released, it's still there, and like everyone's seen um, the AP Dylan um, documentary now on Netflix, and I was watching it, and it just relayed me back to when we done that, and I was like, shit, it should have been released back then, but that was meant to be released alongside my second album. So now what happened is that, long story short, um, other people got involved in the business side of things with Rishi and everyone, and because I was the busiest artist in that sort of like Rishi's sort of artist, um, I was an easy target. And when they had a fallout, it was all put on me because everything was trying to, you know what I mean? Okay, let's stop H from doing gigs, this, that, um, you know what I mean? From this other gentleman. And yeah, man, not exactly gentleman, but yeah, it just, and then what happened was that I wasn't allowed to release bro because it was, there was um, a bloody court allegation that I'm not right to release because I'm signed to X, Y, Z, and I wasn't signed to no one. Me and Rishi have never signed a contract till today. Yet. You know, we've always worked off respect and that love. But I got stitched up, and I wasn't allowed to release my DVD. I wasn't allowed to release that. I had the remix album, which um, PBN done the remix, Max D, which came out. Um, even that was taken off iTunes on the same day. Um, and it, it took a lot to sort of, um, like, for me, I was still gigging, but I was getting letters left, right, centre. No, you're not allowed to gig. I was taken off the all the melee across the UK because um, organisations such as radio stations, they didn't want to get involved. And, you know what I mean? And the thing was that I was like, this, I'm not going to stop. So I took management under my own hand. I thought, do you know what? Anyone can stop me. I'm going to do it myself. I was taking my own bookings at one stage, bro. You know? Because I knew what this meant to me. And then after that, long story short, um, someone else got involved and they sort of I was sort of out of the situation 
but my projects were signed away. My DVD project was signed away to someone else, which I don't, which I didn't have the rights for. Um, but for me to continue my career, that had to be done, kind of thing, you know. Um, but that just shows and um, that what kind of industry we're in. That um, listen, man, there's going to be people trying to stop you. This and that, blah blah, or it's not going to happen. You know I mean, you have your mind to it. Um, and I don't have a stop, bro. You know what I mean? I had a family at that point, a young family at that age. My first one was born. And I was going through it at the same time. And I was gigging at the same time. I was trying to manage all my the house and trying to manage my bookings. Um, it was quite deep, bro. You know? And after that, I didn't really feel like doing it, but my gigs were keeping me alive. You know? So I thank each and every one that supported me from day one, even though I hadn't released. Um, you know, I mean, I haven't released for years, but they've still kept me on the road. You know, without these guys, um, without the respect, I think that it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been possible, you know. So, how, so how, how long was that period then that where you were basically got your handcuffed, you can't release, you, you've had your money taken away from you, your project sort of delayed, you, you've actually kind of restart another another uh, career again? Yeah, a good few years, bro. I'm not gonna lie, a good few years, man. It's um, like, bro, I was like, there were stages where I was like, what's going on, this and that, but at the same time, I was getting busy with gigs. And then it was trying to get in the studio. I couldn't get in the studio because everyone was like, what is going on? You know, and it was, but even like now, it's, it's a blur to me because I've been through so much since then. And at that point, I was thinking to myself, I don't even want to go think about it. You know, it's done. Now I'm focused on my new stuff. But it's, a, it's an experience, bro. And like, I've never sort of signed a document in terms of, okay, yeah, I've signed to this person, signed to that person. Nah, man. They, Yes, now I would do it one hundred and ten percent because I've learned the hard way. You know what I mean? But it's one—it's one of those things, bro. You just have to go through it. And but for me, maybe that—that that was my route, you know. And I'm still very fortunate. I'm still gigging off that one album. You know what I mean? I'm still gigging off that one album. So, and that came out in two thousand eight. So when that when that was when that was cleared finally, and then you went out to release your 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 first single, kind of like independently. How how nervous were you at that? Because then you had your gig, you had your gigs where you you're getting those the the response from them, but you you don't know commercially in terms of like how how what the response might be. Yeah. Well, it's difficult. I'm not gonna lie, man. It was difficult, but I'm not gonna say yeah, it was easy. I was confident. Now I was I was I was nervous because um, remember in those years the games changed the game changed as well. YouTube kicked off, you know, this kicked off, that kicked off, and I'll be honest, bro, I had I, I've had no one guiding me. I've because I didn't know who to trust. I had no one guiding me. I had no one saying, okay, do you know what? Let's do this, this, this. I was thinking, right, do I trust this person? Do I not trust this person? And then after that, Vips, uh, God bless his soul, um, he said to me, he just randomly called his age man, like, you need to do something, man. Let's, I'll back you. Let's do something, you know? Um, and we, I said we got together, then we done clap it then. Um, even that, that was after, um, another project that didn't go ahead but yeah it was just you know, it was difficult bro no doubt it was difficult but i didn't really give up i just thought you know what it's, it's what it is what it is bro you just have to deal with it and crack on the more you dwell on it the more you sort of um get um start looking into things too much which i did get to a point um uh, you know what i mean but it's, it's human nature bro i'm a human you know i'm a i'm not a robot where you can just click a button and say yeah go on control or delete or you know what i mean you have to rebuild yourself and i think rebuilding as an artist um any artists that are watching this, they'll agree. There are going to be times when you feel broken and you have to rebuild yourself with everything going around you. And an artist will understand an artist, you know? I sometimes say to my wife, I say, you will never understand what I go through, but I don't expect you to, you know? Just be there for me, great, but I never expect you and I never will put it on you. But it's, it's one of those kind of things that people need to remember that, listen, artists are humans as well. Anything you do in life, you might be a computer engineer. You're still an artist. You, you have an art and you specialize in it, you know? But um, yeah, man, I've just, um, I mean, it's just anything that I pass on, I just say to people, man, just keep focused, keep doing your thing. Um, you know I mean, if it wasn't meant to be that, then, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I've just, um, I think one, one of the things that I remember of that, that interview was when the first time, and I, I might only be in a handful of people who, 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 who kind of, who listened to it at that time because it was so it was hidden away okay was in terms of like the emotion that that where you were at it was very difficult for you it was yeah. probably the first time i ever heard an artist open up and was very was quite emotional uh, uh, around it it was and, man I, well, sorry 
sorry, it, it was emotional, you know, and now I come back to it, I, I sort of vaguely remember the interviews and stuff. Um, but it was emotional, bro, because it was a time where I felt, um, you felt betrayed, you know, you felt that, yeah, do you know what, you've worked hard, you've not done, you've been transparent, and I was gigging, bro, those days I was gigging, I was doing three gigs a night sometimes, and I was gigging, I was gigging four times a week, sometimes two, three gigs a night, you know, and because I love it, you know, I love it, I, I was very passionate about it, but mm. when that happens, then you think, bro. At the end, I'm a human, and I and I had to take it into my own hands at one point, and I lost it. I was like, "Listen, now I'm willing to sort of take that straight. Whatever it is, I'm not going to let someone take the piss out of me. You know, um, it's happened once, twice, three times. No, it's not going to happen now. You know, and I'm I'm and I'm. It's a lesson, bro, for my kids. I'm telling my kids that listen, that I was left by myself, but I took on my own management at my peak when I was busy, like after. Um, I took on my own problems, and I'm proud to say it because it's it's my own future. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now, unfortunately, yeah, I have my team around me, and I have them taking care of stuff. But I still overlook everything because I'm not going to take that chance again. You know? But it's one of those things you live and learn, bro. You know? You have to sort of. Um, listen, I'll throw you. Oh, 100 percent. I think the the even for an artist now, in terms of no matter how big they are, if they don't have. Um... If they don't have direct connection with what what's being booked for them or they're doing it, you're an idiot. Yeah. And because you, you're just one decision away from from uh, trying to blame somebody else, even though if you, you're given a fake name, if you're answering the phone, but it's you anyway. Like I just don't understand that embarrassment that people have to build these layers of to to validate. But in that in that interview, you also you you discussed of how difficult it was for your dad yeah. when he was when he he could see what was going on but felt like he couldn't couldn't help as much as he wanted to that it was yeah he felt helpless bro and i can't even imagine um what he felt because like me and me being in that position with my kids bro it's like you'd want to you'd want to go crazy you know um but it's um and i can't sort of i can't sort of explain or i can't put in words of what he might have felt or anything like that we've had this chat a few times but i've just um sometimes you have to find your fight your own battle and like when I need advice or anything else, I'll go straight to him anyway. And he's like, listen, don't worry, just keep going, just keep going. Don't worry about it. It's, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you're still where you are now is because you've got God's blessings. Just keep going for it, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I think he can answer that. Um, it's difficult for me to say what he's going through or what he was thinking and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, man, it's just it's one of those sort of dark phases. And, again, like they say, man, God always shows you the but I think it's important, especially for in, for people who are wanting to come in the industry and seeing careers kind of born overnight. Yeah. I think it's I think a lot more artists now are disposable than what they used to be. Yeah. I think you had a little bit more ch- a bit more longevity and chance in terms of developing a career. Here, as if like now, it feels like you've got to have all your videos ready, everything ready, your content ready, three or four songs all lined up, and you might only last six months. Um, do you think that, do you agree with that? Do you think it's all, or do you think that's just the the, the, the nature of the beast now? Um, I just, <clears throat> like the industry's changed rapidly, bro. It's, um, it's changed rapidly. It's um, now, like I was saying, that you release a song and the song's just come out, people ask you straight away, when's the next song coming out? Which is great. I've been a lot of other songs, look. Uh, but the thing is that because that is because the industry is moving so fast and people are working so fast and hats off to all these youngsters, bro. They are working hard, bro. You know, they are working hard. There's amazing producers out there. There's amazing sort of, um, I think people are opened up a bit more now, you know. Um, and I think it's just, you know, it's just great to see it, man. I hate to put a sort of a, a downer on the industry right now. But um, it's just the way it is, bro. And I think we just have to look at it and think, you know what? Hats off to these guys. Um, let's just let's just ride the wave now. Let's just keep going the way the industry is going. Because we can sit here and say, oh, it was better than my dad lot can do that for their. They could say, yeah, do you know what? All the man love the yes, he, we came on and this and that. But again, if you keep looking at that, it's, a, it's rather it's a trend, right? You have to keep moving along. So um, I, I wouldn't just sit here and say okay, now this is what's happening now. Then it was different. It was different, 100%. But I think now we just have to just go with it, man. And I think now we don't know what's going to click, bro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're close to coming up to 20 years of being in the industry in the... Yeah, yeah. I don't, hey, look, if I'm going great, I'm taking man's down with me. And it's <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there you go. 
Um, w- when you reflect on your on your career, uh, so far, what would you see as what what the the highlights were? And yeah, I'll ask you that first, and then um, so, I'll like- give you the second question. Actually, how did you know when you you made it at that point? Uh, at that point, I'll tell you honestly, bro. Um, I mean, let me answer both of these questions. Like, sort of, actually, no, we made it was when obviously working with Rishi was a dream for me, bro. Um, I've been a massive fan of Rishi's from day one, and working with him, I was like, wow, this is just a vibe, you know, it was like a dream come true. And I'll be honest, bro, I used to act um, in front of my mirror, like his songs playing on Buddy Bazaar, Master of Gage, but I used to pretend that that's me on stage. I used to sing and I used to watch myself in the mirror this and that. And I acted out my dreams, bro. That's how that's how I got literally acted out my dreams and it's come true, you know. Um so that's one point. And then when we were launching the album, there was obviously back in the day there were flyers, bro. Like now it's all online presence for um gigs and stuff. And those days flyers, posters on walls, there was um obviously banners on lampposts and stuff, you know what I mean? Double sided mm-hmm. this and that. And it was when I drove out. It was my launch party for South Gadama. I'll never, I'll never forget Fat Nights Mo, um, one of the, I mean, legendary uh, promoters those days. And I've literally driven out of my road, and all I see every single lamppost, like going down that way, that way near my high school, going okay, house there was like massive in pink H dummy. Um, and then I think it was Osterley Park Hotel or something. It was a phone party or something like that everywhere. And I was like, is this for real? You know, it's like, that, that was like a dream for me. And I was like, but I didn't expect that. And that for me was like, well, it was like, I just bought my new car then. So I'm driving. And at that point, there was people like from local school. Oh my God, that's how you said that. But it was like, for me, it was like, I didn't expect that kind of thing, you know? Because um, I didn't really, I don't know, I don't think I gave myself up. But yeah, man big or I'm going to be famous or I'm going to be just like, yeah, that was direction. I want to do well and I want to be performing. But I didn't know that reaction that I was going to get the kind of thing. Yeah, like I said, it all, all goes down to the, 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 the marketing around you was, it was a, for me, it was a ceiling point. I was like, they've done this bang on. And it was, um, it was the first time that I remember, I always have this kind of theme about how do you professionalise a an industry which is which is not professional at all <laughs> when you think about it and the way that you that you've got how you've evolved and and you've done that uh is being quality how how would you say from a musical aspect your your sound has changed over the years um i think um it's how can i say bro it's um like obviously something down that album it was a uh, rishi stamp on there you know um, I loved a lot of my Desi music, which eventually I started doing future. Like I done a song with GV, which I loved uh, until today. And um, um which we shot in LA, and then done a song with PBN as well, Gary Gardi. Then we bought the Yadi, that was a bit more traditional. Mm. And done a couple of features with Mumsy, Rackstar, Dance. Um, I think now, do you know what, bro? It's just like now, everyone, I'm going to give a prime example. Everyone's on the hip hop scene right now. Um, I've not done a hip hop type song because. I don't know if people are going to, it's not that I'm thinking too much, but I don't know if people are going to relate that to me or that sort of suit me or kind of thing. You know, I'm going to fall in love with the song and then do it. But now, for example, we've done Holly Holly with Sean and Brenda. Um, it's got that sort of modern Afro twist to it. But again, I didn't want to go away from my style completely. Either, you know, mm. and I don't want to be a, an artist which um, does things because other people are doing it or well, that's the trend. Um, yeah, you have to sort of adapt. Like for example, hence we used some of the Afro beat um, influence in Holly Holly, uh, which Sean and Brenda used and stuff like that. And lyrically, we sort of stepped it up compared to what it was um, back in the day. But um, yeah, man, I think you just have to fall in love with the song, bro. So now it's like um, even finding a song, like even second third song, it's not been easy because we want to find a find balance in what will suit me at the same time what we want to give the people. Is that what is it because it, is there a lack of lyricists or who match your style or what what do you think that what do you think that gap is? Um, I think finding the, the right lyricist is um is very important. Uh, you know, what I mean, it's like now, like even trying to get my dad to adapt to uh, <laughs> like today's kind of lyrics, like those days. Like dad wrote Hakidama. Um, you know, what I mean, 
he wrote Nuts Dive Kana, he wrote uh, Luktege, I think Luktege as well, and we wrote quite a few songs then. And but now it's it would work, but it's it, it's weird, man. It's weird to say, bro. It's like now there's one two artists that I'm working with in India, a uh, lyricist. Um, they send me stuff, and I'm like, nah, it's not. But then when you when you actually put it through, it sounds right. So. It's one of those things, man. It's a balance of everything, you know. And I, I love to sort of be involved um, in the project from the start, as in the hook line melodies. No, I don't just want it to be given to me and then sing it, you know. That's the whole thing that you have to put your own stamp on it because everyone's got their own style. But at the same time, there's people that might be the best out of you as well um, and get you to try, try something different, which you have to be open to. So now I'm working with a few youngsters, like new kids that are on the block, um, and they're, they're trying to get me to do new things. And I'll be like, yeah, do you know what? Okay, cool. Bring it on. Let's try it. Because you never know what they're going to bring out. Yeah, because during COVID, you you, all, you had you developed quite a lot and um and actually set up your home studio. Was that right? Yeah. Um, what was what was that like then in terms of like uh bringing it bringing things together and seeing the completing the process from from full? Because now you don't necessarily need everybody uh all the time. Now you can do majority of it yourself. Yeah, and that, to be honest, when I set the studio up, I didn't even um, get around finishing it or getting it fully functional because just so much going on. But the, as I learned, man, you don't need to. Uh, my main things I need to buy, uh, which, you know, I mean, I could sit here and I've got obviously my recording equipment um, where it's going to sound like I'm in a vocal booth, you know. Um, it's always technology evolved now and devices, the mics that you use. So, um, but I think it for me, I just wanted to get back into that creative zone. You know, I wanted to get my mind into that creative zone. And as an artist, people know that okay, when you're in that environment, you want to keep evolving in that environment. You know, um, you can't just yeah step in a vocal booth, sing a song. And I always say that. I was always say it to my wife. I said, listen, it's not as easy as oh yeah, go to studio, record a song, come out. No, you need to spend time. You need to get into that space, um, to be fully engrossed into that space. And you know what I mean. It's like you're feeding a plant, bro. You need to water. You need to obviously put the seed, and then you need to start watering, it and then you need to let it, you know, um, just blossom. And that's that's the way music is, bro. Do, do you ever have a like, <clears throat> especially with creatives, for example, some are a lot more quiet, some can be a lot more extrovert. How do you re re reset yourself if if you're struggling creatively in terms of what you need to do? What do you do in order to get those juices flowing? Well, I love traveling, man. Uh, I love I love traveling, and that's um that's one thing that when the like, lockdown was hard because obviously gigs were like, obviously cancelled completely, and I'm I'm always on a flight. Um, you know, what I mean, either Kenya, Malaysia, Singapore, um, Dubai, etc. So Canada, and it was traveling definitely brings out my creative juices. You know what I mean? And also being around people that want to bring the best out of you. So if I'm in studio and just jamming, just it doesn't necessarily have to be. That you're in the studio because you're there to make a song. You could be just right. Let's just jam. Let's just get ideas, you know. Um, and with me, I need my, I need my daily spa, my, you know, I mean, my gym. I need to be in the spa, so on the steam every day, um, to sort of feel good, and feel good about yourself. My plunge pool and yeah. So, are you still are you, are you still doing your FA coaching? No, 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 you've done that. But I play Monday nights. I'm playing tonight. Might as well, yeah. So, but the coaching and stuff I haven't done. I'm more coaching at the kids' school now. Um, like, I mean, their games and their Saturday, Sunday leagues. But um, other than that, man, just playing football um, twice a week and just keeping fit, bro. And that that for me is is a it's an escape from all like you know, I mean, you've got everything going on. It's an escape, and then back to the grind, bro. You know, you you you, you your family heritage. You've got over 30, 40 years worth of experience within that within the household. Who've seen many um, versions of our industry, I would say, o- over the years. Yeah. Do you think that we're in a healthy position here in the UK anymore? I think I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. Um, I'm not going to give up on it. I'm not going to say put a negative on it. I think we we are, and we but. We need to work harder, bro. We need to work harder together. That's that's what I'll say. There's always um it's with anything, bro. Even if we were on top of our game, there'll still be room for improvement. I mean, there's never there's never occurred. I've always been taught that listen, man, you might be a master, but it doesn't matter. You're still gonna keep learning. Even the masters are learning with you, you know. Um and it's it's one of those things, but it, do you know what it'd just be it would just be nice, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, when um 
it was so good to see um, at the event that um, Just Army put up the other day for mm. in Birmingham, British Asia and everyone and this he beats. Just, I weren't even on the bill, bro. Jazz called me and he said that, yeah, hey, you know what? He's dropped a message saying that, yeah, do you want to come to this event? Uh, when they were organizing, he said, look, make sure you come down. This, that, blah, blah, blah. Whoever can come down, support. And bro, Sadaf Al Jabanda, you know, we should be going. We should be supporting that industry. We should be supporting our brothers in the industry as well. And it was just great to see all the artists there together, bro. Um, you know what I mean? And um, that, that's a prime example of what we need to do. We shouldn't be sort of like a nah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a here, I'm there. I shouldn't be going there because I'm not on the bill. And what, bro? You know what I mean? Support each other. It's, it's, it's no skin of like, well, no, no, no harm of me, but I went down. Yeah, I went down from London and we had a good time and we enjoyed it, bro. That's, that's the main thing. Mm. Yeah, you, you, Jazz, and maybe one or two that don't come to it. You're like Switzerland, and you're always like, you're, you're cool with everybody. So if ever there was going to be, if there was going to be, <laughs> to unify, it'd be you guys in it. There's some, there's some people just like, there's, Different camps in it, and no one's gonna fucking go anyway. <laughs> yeah, you tend to be one of them, bro. You have to. I mean, everyone's on the same. Everyone's the same world, bro, man. Everyone needs to be the same, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in terms of like when you when you were saying you're traveling, you were one of probably. I always remember one of your first. You were going over to Malaysia and all these kind of places like. That. What's the kind of artist experience and um. That you exp- that you get to feel over there compared to when you're going around other places in the world. Oh, well, it's unbelievable, man! Um, I think the international love and any artist would agree. Um, it's amazing, bro, because we're not accessible there. You know, here people might see us. This and that's great, but when you're in another country, um, you've come you've come from an outsider into their space, and they love it. You know, like Kenya has been one of my, like back then. I would say first Malaysia, Singapore. One of was one of my biggest markets. I was there literally every um every month, if not every two months, um, like the whole year, you know, for a couple of years. And then now Kenya, I think Kenya took that baton. And I was doing literally Kenya I've done I remember in the last year and a half, twenty eight times, twenty eight, twenty nine times. And that was weddings. I've done three public gigs in the space of four months. And each one was sold out. So um <clears throat> but it's what you give back to them as well, bro. You know, it's what you could give back to them. And like now, if I'm there and I go and I do some orphanage work and um people are there and stop me this now, I say, Yeah, let's chill. You know what I mean? And that's that's what people love, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you just have to keep that balance, bro. But I think the international love is amazing, bro. I think it's just it's just great, bro. And I can't wait to start obviously um I've travelled a lot, but I still feel I need to travel more. <laughs> mm. We've seen we've seen the renaissance of the EP, the yeah. the album, yeah. moving away a little bit from singles. Yeah. You, you, your future in terms of kind of from from a musical point and release wise, what do you think your next steps will be like in the next sort of six twelve months in terms of projects? Um. So now Holly Holly's come out, working on the got another one complete, which we're just planning to get out now. Um, but then I'm thinking that do we drop an EP? But with all this whole crisis going on, I don't feel like releasing nothing now, to be honest, bro. Um, I don't think um, I'm in a right mind frame. It's just, you know what I mean? And I don't think anyone's sort of interested right now what's going on. And I think it's, it's only fair that we hold tight and just sort of focus on making a change in that part of the world. Uh, but in terms of musically, I think um, I would love to do an album. But again, you know the constraints of an album, the the push behind it, the funding behind it, everything. Um, it's it takes a lot. It takes a lot, and not only that is how much effort you're gonna put into it. Is that attention and get there, which is the full aim. But then I'm thinking now that I would love to do an EP because I've got so many songs ready anyway, mm. and I don't just want to throw them in an album. Um, if I do an EP, I want to do a video to every single song. You know, mm. if I do an album, I want to do a video to every single song. Um, yeah. That's kind of I, f- I feel it's gone more I think it's swayed a lot into kind of the conversation it's moving talent will always go through right it will yeah. always make it to the cream uh, to, to the top but I think that cha- that that niche is getting smaller and smaller I think now it's going for people with resource yeah 
So you don't like if you're a singer, you've got to be a film director, you've got to be a, good at artwork, you've got to do everything yourself in order to kind of cut those costs. And so those people who sometimes got those that natural talent don't kind of push the way through because of it. So I, I, I think you're right in terms of like you know the the single mentality is a little bit easier in terms of on, on the pocket, but that gamble of doing an EP and an album for somebody kind of who started off fresh is just so risky nowadays. What's your, advice, what, what do you, what's your advice on that? Well, I think, um, look, man, if you've got a good team around you, if you've got a solid team around you, um, just make sure that the team stays solid from day one, man. That's the biggest thing, you know what I mean? Your energy, your people are going to drive you. Um, and in terms of musically, um, like, yeah, man, people are doing singles. I, I, know, I know artists that have gone, that have blown up because doing cover versions, you know? Um, but that's the way they've done it. There's nothing wrong about it. That's the way they've done it. It's, it's all good, you know. But um, I just think, man, just um, again for me to say, look, don't know, I might even do an album. It might even come to it overnight. I might even do an album. Just say, yeah, that's it. Boom, let's do it. You know, we've got that team in place. I might have someone approach me saying, okay, H, we're standing behind you. We want to do this. Bam, 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 bam. Get it done. Let's, let's do it, man. There's no, there's no such thing. It's not going to happen. Mm. Uh, but right now, what I'm focusing on is the next three songs, and that could be an EP. It could be five, six track EP, um, if it's going to be album, it could be another two more tracks to do a track album, I don't know, um, but right now it's just getting the songs, getting in the studio and just, yeah man, just hammering out some good music, man. I keep busy on the road. <laughs> no, 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 I, I I, agree, I completely understand in terms of what you say, I think it's just easy for people to say, oh, just do this, do this, and not, not understand the kind of resource and finance around it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying, I've got this cough, I just couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> it's just mad. Um, so this is called the bandwagon, and yeah, this is where I give uh, uh, the the guest the opportunity to either jump on a bandwagon, uh, jump off a bandwagon, or if there's anything on their chest that they want to get rid of, this is their space to do so. Okay. So it's over to you, is there? <laughs> bro, anything on my chest is nothing, man. Just um, I just literally, bro, just grafting, just doing. Brand new music, Holly Holly's out now. Um, but in terms of uh, working with people, bro, it's just now it's about time to just literally get back in the studio. You know what I mean? And any youngsters, um, any people that think that okay, you know what? Um, let's get in the studio. Just hit me up, and let's just um, let's just make UK music fresh again, man. I think um, UK music definitely it was a massive movement for us, you know. And the way it's had the influence around the world. Um, it's great, but one thing I just want to, yeah, maybe get off my chest, man. Everyone just needs to chill out um, and just start working together and just um, be real, man. That's it. And just keep your egos um, away and just chill. <laughs> uh, I mean, you've got... Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, you've got... Like saying it or... <laughs> no, no, it's all right. You know, like, it's, there's, you know, you can bring world peace and whatever as well at the same time. But I was, like, you, you come from a, a place where you've experienced it firsthand in terms of that unification of, of, of an industry and working together and and seeing it where, where it is now as well at the, at the same time. I'm I'm more cynical anyway, it's just in my natural nature to, 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 to see. But um, just to see how far, uh, you know, that, 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 that you've come and personally in terms of, we've met a couple of times over the years yeah. and, um, and see where you're in those tight spots, come out of it and develop. I think there's a lot of lessons in terms of your journey where, you know, where people would have thought it would have, it should have been and could have been easier for you. And that adversity and that story off, uh, off, off camera and off, off the speakers and off mic is, yeah. is far more valuable for people to understand about um, having documentation, understanding the industry that you're working, the nuances, looking, be, be careful who you're working with not to be just kind of swayed in being becoming collateral damage in arguments that have nothing to do with you uh, guilty by association but then to have the guts to actually have two careers one where it happened from there then you've got to reinvent yourself and do it and you're still consistently um you know performing is i i think that's a, a, a that's an attribute of hard work and ethics that that needs to and consistency that needs to be put through this industry and and be appreciated by people out there as well because the next person might not be so lucky in that being in that in that in that time when we talked about things that 
quite evidently were having an effect on your mental health before people used to use mental health as as a bandwagon or a campaign or a an excuse or an actual re justified reason that like you are a walking example of that yeah and i still think people do um to a certain extent use it as a thingy you know to get that sort of attention but like, listen man i could i could i could sit here and start going i went through this i went through that i, I could have given up on my career bro but yeah, man, i've got responsibilities everyone's got responsibilities out there you know and I think you just have to sort of buckle up and just be positive, bro. Biggest thing is just have the right energy around you, man. Bring that right energy out of yourself. And there's been times, bro, where I can't <clears throat> listen. Every every human makes mistakes. I could have been a person that may have had bad energy around me at some point, but because that was the way I was made to feel, you know. But as soon as you realize that, snap out of that. I mean, just focus on the good, you know. Bring the best out of people. Bring the best out of you. And um, that's what I would always say, man. H, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking time. I know you had a mad schedule as well, so just to get this done, I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thank you all the best, man. Thank you, man. Look after yourself, my bro.